Daryl Sims, former CIA, recently was on the Leak Project sharing information about disclosure, different types of cloned extraterrestrials, experiences that he has had and his family has had, different types of implants, etc. I first spoke with Mr. Sims back in 2011, and it was a roundtable interview via Skype. Strange, weird, bizarre sounds were coming through the Skype interview, like whoosh, whoosh. And I also, last time I spoke with Daryl was just a couple months ago, he was uncovering a plethora of information about ETs and the possibilities that many of these greys and reptilians and Nordics and different types of greys are actually cloned and have a specific purpose for a particular race of beings, which could possibly be what some consider in religious terms fallen angels. I have wondered and speculated if these beings are the Anunnaki, and if the Anunnaki are the Nephilim, and if the Nephilim are the Elohim, plural, there's just so many similarities in all of these different religions and scriptures and cultures that seem to have a foundation of the Anunnaki. Well, Mr. Sims wanted me to share some information with the Leak Project audience today. He sent me an email because the last show that we did had such great response from the Leak Project audience. He got hundreds of emails, and he wanted to say that he has attempted to get back to pretty much everybody, but because he had a stroke about a month ago and has been dealing with hospitals, he hasn't had the opportunity. He would like to come back on the show again soon, and he's got all sorts of medical bills that he's dealing with right now. He still wants to make it to the seminars that he has scheduled. And essentially what happened is the past couple of years, doctors haven't been able to figure out what's wrong with him. So he says that he's basically been a cripple. And then he goes and sees a specialist. Hold on a second. He goes and sees a specialist. Specialist says the reason the doctors haven't healed you yet is because they don't know what's wrong with you. He then goes and sees another specialist, gets a hip replacement. Things are going good. He's recovering. And then he has a stroke. So very unfortunate. And I hope that we can send enough good energy his way combined with his own energy and what he's doing and you know, divine source that he recovers and heals quickly. So may the force be with you. I certainly would feel honored, and I'm sure the audience would as well, if you could come back on the show when you recover. And I want to discuss a TV series that came out that reminds me a lot of what Mr. Sims and his family, some of his family, have gone through in their lifetimes. Watch the TV series Taken. And it's a TV series that came out. I think Steven Spielberg was the, the director or the producer. It's a miniseries. And specific bloodlines get abducted by these extraterrestrials. And it kind of stays in the family line. And I think about all of the experiments that were done according to these ancient tablets and storylines. Genetic engineering, human engineering, the creation of Adam and Eve the creation of humans to do the work for the gods, according to these Sumerian tablets. There's many stories. And with that said, if the Anunnaki genetically engineered different beings and they created us, wouldn't it be safe to use that as a linking point if the shoe fits where it and the Anunnaki could still be doing this today. Mr. Sims also described how there is this huge ship that they had footage of where he thinks these clones are being produced, many of the greys, many of the reptilians, many of the Nordics, many of the Sasquatch-type beings. 
And then I have thought to myself, well, does that mean that all greys are cloned? Does that mean that all reptilians are cloned? Does that mean that all Nordics and all Sasquatch beings are cloned? I think no. I think that there are still beings out there that are naturally produced, hello, and not cloned, that would be gray-like, or that would be Nordic-like, or that would be Sasquatch-like. I feel that Sasquatch, the Yetis and Bigfoots, they could have been the original Earthlings. They could be a lot older than our version of human right now. And they could be very in tune with actually being able to go in and out of dimensions, be evasive, almost invisible, and that's a whole other story. Yet I think that these Anunnaki, these beings that like to play creator or creators, they can take the genetics of all these different beings, mix them up, and create slaves for them. And, and Mr. Sims also feels that these greys are literally designed to be, genetically designed to be like a slave class. And they've got different levels of greys. And I think about the old school microchips that have been pulled out of people versus some of the newer stuff they're finding and the stuff that we can create as human beings for tracking technologies. And I wonder how many tracking devices that people pull out of themselves that they think could be alien could actually be human, my labs type stuff. And that still doesn't take away from what I feel are there are many people out there that have had some type of implant that could be ET. I am just wondering why some of these technologies aren't much more advanced from a species that can genetically engineer beings and can interstellar travel. Yet I don't have all the answers and I don't know all the information. So I can't come up with a solid conclusion to that. Yet I can come up with a solid question to think of maybe the possibility is Oftentimes, some of these older abduction cases were MyLabs programs. And how many times have there been factions within our own people working with ETs in conjunction? And was that treaty really signed that allowed certain gray beings or certain beings to manipulate and do genetic engineering on specific people for technologies? How much of that is true? How much of that is disinformation? So I, I certainly hope we can get Mr. Sims back on the show again soon. And he once again wanted to thank the wonderful people that have written to him. He says it's in the hundreds for sure. And he says that he's also answered every email so far that he's been able to, but because of health opportunities right now, um, he, he just doesn't have the time to get back to everybody since these problems. So Mr. Sims, thank you for sending me this email wishing you a quick recovery. And, and folks, I have friends and family personally that have gone through very similar experiences and encounters that Mr. Sims talks about. And guess what? It's within specific family lines. Like my friend, her mom, her kids, her dad. So it's... If you know somebody that's been abducted or has multitudes of experiences of ETs, their family is probably connected as well. And then I'm thinking of why. You know, why is it specific people and specific bloodlines? Well, it's probably the DNA. They, they want that specific DNA because they're creating something out of it. I mean, folks, we've got scientists in laboratories right now that are 3D printing biological materials that are literally biological machines. We have nanotechnologies now that can move around little bits of matter. We have scientists working on technology to rewrite DNA code. So if we can do it, why can't they? They can probably print up beans, literally. Like we're talking about printing up beans, printing up biological machines, printing up food. Wouldn't that be something that they have probably been doing for a long time. And if you take back these Anunnaki stories, you can go back hundreds of thousands of years, and then you can get into the Planet X hypothesis, the Fermi paradox, describing how other planets that are out there have been around longer than Earth 
that probably have Earth-like people on these planets that have a lot more time to evolve. And I'm going to get into the Fermi Paradox with you later today because that is just one of the most amazing essays that I've ever had an opportunity to read that really makes you question why we don't have contact on a, re on a regular basis with extraterrestrials. All the different questions and possibilities that, not all of them, but many different questions and possibilities that you can think of are discussed in this, in this Fermi Paradox. So why haven't we made contact on a public level with extraterrestrials? Or do we on a regular basis, but we're just under so much m disinformation and because of all the mind control tactics that are used by the powers that be, it can be hiding in plain sight. What if ETs look just like us? Which I am sure there are many that do. Look, you wouldn't be able to tell them uh, apart from anybody else. Shapeshifters. If you have beings that can literally change their molecular level of density and the vibrations of their frequency, then why couldn't they shapeshift? And recently when I was on Chimney Rock, out there in Chimney Rock, I think there's ley lines out there or something because the video out there was just crazy. And my video was working great until I got there. I did two videos. Just looks like, looks like you're video recording something on trippy, you know, hi, uh, hyper hallucinogenics or something. No, um, I didn't do any editing, any altering. I uploaded those videos directly to youtube.com slash clandestine time war. And people kept saying, oh, it's faulty equipment. There was a lot of people that said it was faulty equipment. A lot of people were like, wow, this is incredible. But a lot of people, oh, it's faulty equipment. It's crappy equipment. It's a Samsung Note 8. It is a very high-end camera. I never had any issues before or after. And I did video footage right after when I got back down to Chimney Rock. No problems whatsoever. Only on Chimney Rock. So I think it had something to do with ley lines or energy, electromagnetic frequencies, some paranormal stuff. I definitely think there was some energy up there. I felt it. I feel it now. I still feel it, you guys. I feel, I feel something, I made contact or connections with something out there, but I still feel different. So with that said, then I start to think of the possibilities of higher beings that can actually manipulate frequencies and manipulate matter because they've got that connect. They have the code. They know how to use the code. We have the code too, but there's firewalls. Uh, there's reports that say only about 1.2% of our DNA do we actually use. The rest is junk. Well, I call it BS. There's probably firewalls on the rest of that DNA that makes it more difficult to access. And probably that DNA, the code is so far out and so advanced that our software and hardware can't understand the code right now but then the scientists oh it's just faulty code it doesn't mean anything well then take out that 98 percent faulty dna and see what happens i wouldn't do it i was being sarcastic probably not a good idea although i'm sure they've got labs and underground bases they're doing all that stuff they've been doing it for years so anunnaki do they make the grays do they make many of these reptilians and nordics and many of these beings that people experience when they are abducted The Anunnaki, Anu, Enki, Enlil, or say Anu, Enlil, Enki, Inanna, and all of the different entities underneath. So many tablets and stories that talk about these incredible beings. Are they still around today in some type of, I mean, are they influencing us today still through, and let's talk about this, let me go back a minute. I'm going to add another piece to the puzzle. Look at these Sumerian tablets that show Anu in this spaceship. And Enki and Enlil, Enlil and Enki, are flanking Anu. So, it's a spaceship. People can say whatever they want. Look at it. It's a spaceship. It's a craft. It's not highly concentrated swamp gas from Uranus. And then you can go to the Vedas. Read, these, read about these flying cars and these ships that are talked about thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Even how... 
the kind of fuel that they used. Now, with that said, does that mean that these beings came from another planet? Did they come from another dimension? Or did they come from here? They traveled the stars and they came back. So many questions. Be excellent to each other, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure to support our sponsors. Check out Noble Gold Investments. I just read an article today about how we are seeing many signs that show a bear market is on the horizon. Now, stocks are still looking really good as far as overall. Although, if you've been watching these numbers, these huge spikes, these huge drops over the past few months, you might be looking for something a little bit more stable. Well, check out gold and silver. Check out precious metals if you're looking for an opportunity to diversify. Noble Gold Investments has great opportunities right now. If you've got a 401k or an IRA, you can diversify that. Put it into precious metals. Give them a call. Let them know Leak Project sent you. Also, there's a couple books they're giving for Leak Project listeners on how to get out of the rat race, how inflation is used against you. The books are free. Read them. You don't need to buy anything. Do yourself a favor. Read the books. Click the links. And be excellent to each other. And go to youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Hit that subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, make sure that you're still subscribed and the gremlins didn't eat your subscription. And leakproject.com. Check it out. A really cool forums section there. You can sign up for free. Get access to all the podcasts at leakproject.com. Even exclusive podcasts for premium members. Downloadable, streamable, ad-free. That's my shameless plug. Be the change you want to see. Nanu, 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 nanu. We come in peace. We come in peace. Knack, 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 knack.